All right, Sky Squad, we are back in the building. And of course, we are talking Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 4, Episode 15, which just so happens to be the mid-season finale. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, I am still on vacation. I'm still out here in LA, but we still getting the doggone thing done, okay? So if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, do all the things, become a part of the community. Now, let's go. So we got to rate this episode to start things off. And for me, I want you guys to put your, you know, your ratings in the chatterization from a scale of one to 10 on what you think about the episode. And for a mid-season finale, I was kind of like concerned there for a second because I was like, I don't know what this is given. I mean, some of these scenes were kind of extended, but you know, that's the great thing about Love and Marriage Huntsville is that they don't just give you, you know, two minutes of a scene. They're giving you the whole 10 minute scene because they need the, the characters to work their way through whatever the situation is that they're going through. So I did like that aspect of it, but I was still kind of like, oh, I'm going to need some more fireworks for this mid-season finale. However... I got a different kind of fireworks for this mid-season finale. Oh, yes, the fireworks, i.e. the sparks between Melody and Martell as they finally faced off and saw each other at the end of this episode. Baby, let me tell you something. I felt some things, man. I felt some things. I felt some. Th I felt something, and I don't know if it was because of the flashbacks or maybe it was because of the music or... Or the way, you know, Melody had that smile on her face or the look in Martell's eyes as he was looking at her. But baby, let me tell you something. I was feeling some things. So, I mean, because the, it had me in my feelings, I got to give it like a 9.5 because I'm like, I... I'm looking for feeling. I'm looking for raw emotion. I want to be either angry, upset, happy, you know, elated. I want to feel something when I'm watching an episode of one of my favorite shows. And I got to tell you, this episode, it delivered for me. Okay? It delivered for me. So you guys let me know what you would rate it in the in the chatterization. And let me know why. Because I'm interested in always reading your comments about why you guys saw an episode the way you saw it and why you rated it the way you rated it. So let's go ahead and dive on into this Ponderosa. The first thing we get is basically Tiffany, Kimmy, and Letitia going rock climbing. Tiffany actually makes it to the top. Kimmy is literally in tears and shaking because she feel full of heights. And baby, let me tell you something, Kimmy, I don't blame you because I'm afraid of heights too. So I, I was with her on that, but I mean, she was literally shaking and a crying and a carrying on. It was, I was like, oh, we ain't never got to so much emotion out of Kimmy. But anyway, basically, Letitia wants to invite them all to the marriage retreat. And I, what I noticed is that she says it's for couples only. So this is kind of like the new, you know, love and marriage Huntsville with, with the couples. And then you got Melody and Martell off to the side kind of doing their own thing. And it does kind of feel like the cast is a little bit disjointed for the most part with this season. Even though we have had some moments where all cast, you know, kind of got together. You know, I'm kind of used to a lot of other shows where we will get the cast all together at the end of the episode. Okay, so like for Housewives, let's go ahead and call a thing a thing. Housewives gives you 30 minutes of either you know one-on-one -on -one scenes or personal story and then the last 30 minutes is always going to be a group scene love and marriage huntsville doesn't follow a specific formula so you kind of really never know what you're going to get and i have to admit i really like that actually so um i digress anyway the next thing we see is melody prepping wardrobe for an upcoming event she's going to be hosting the grand opening of an amphitheater and you know miss van wishes that the kids could be there and for Mel, she's like, well, until there's growth in Martell, this is just how it has to be. And Miss Van encourages her to keep focusing on her healing. And she says that Martell, Martell needs to heal from his evil ways. OK, so until he does that, she needs to go ahead and keep on keeping on. OK. So speaking of Martell, he goes to check in on Lewis and, you know, see how he's been doing since the death in the family or whatnot. And. Um, we find out that Martell is indeed going to be taking the builder's license 
And so at that point in time, he said it was coming up in two weeks. Now, that had to be about a month or two ago or whatever when that was filmed. So my thought is, you took the test. Have you passed the test? Hopefully you passed the test. So now we can, you know, give you some kudos and some congratulations because this has been a long time coming. I mean, I feel like you got all these other things going on. What you should be focusing on is that exam. But, you know, I digress until, okay, until we find out exactly if he got that thing or not, okay? But until then, we just going to have to, you know, keep it in prayer like he asked for, all right? So to get on this topic of Martell talking about how he misses his marriage, and I'm like, when I say what now? And I say what now? You ain't, you going we gonna just gloss over that? Okay, okay. Ultimately, he's trying to say he wants to be married again. And Lewis is like, well, just make sure whoever you're talking to understands that you got, you know, all these kids, okay? And Martel is like, well, yeah, I do got five. So that might be a little bit of a, you know, hindrance for some people. But, you know, whoever the right woman is for me, she gonna accept all these kids, okay? How about that? Anyway, Lewis wants him to address Melody and you know, Melody not communicating with him because Martell is like, she's not answering my emails, my texts, my phone calls, my pages, my, um, the pigeon carrier. She ain't addressing nothing that I send her way. Okay. So Lewis is like, she's using the kids to try to hurt you and warns him that she's a scorned woman and all this. And I'm like, now Lewis, I could have swore you was just talking about how good Melody uh, of a friend Melody was to you and Tiffany. And now that you in front of Martell, you basically telling him that the woman is trying to use the kids against him. Fuel in his fire. OK. So Martell goes on to talk about Melody's heart being dark and how she loses all of her friends and they all stop being friends with her. And he basically tells Lewis that it's going to happen to you, too. OK. And Lewis says, well, man, just be true to yourself, okay? Just be true to yourself. And I'm like, that's been his problem all along. He's only been true to himself, not true to his wife, but whatever. Anyway, Martel wants to meet up with Melody to have some sort of agreement so that they can co-parent the kids better. And I'm actually all for that because I think it does show a little bit of growth in him. And it made me proud to see that he was willing to put forth those, you know, those steps and make the effort to make their relationship better. Because I do think that ultimately it is for the benefit of the kids that they come together. And I think based on last season, we were all kind of see tired of seeing Melody and Martell arguing in every other episode. So for me, this is a good thing. So Kimmy is at home packing for the trip. And Maurice is like, what are we going, girl? And so she tells him about the retreat. And he's like, I don't want to go. You know, Dr. Francis fixed me the last time I saw him and I'm good. But Kimmy thinks that they can use some type of recharge. And Maurice is like, listen, I don't want to take on nobody else's problems because that's what this is going to turn into. So she thinks that their relationship could use some counseling, you know, just to kind of, you know, always keep them in this mindset of, you know, doing better for each other. And she wonders if there's things that, you know, he thinks that she could improve on. So Maurice gets into this thing about having sex every day, which Kimmy even states that Marceau thinks is excessive because it's like, I mean, for me, I'm going to unpack this conversation the way I perceived it, Okay. This man basically is telling her he wants it twice a day. And in order for him to get happy about going on this trip, she's going to have to give it to him twice a day while they're there. OK, so she kind of agrees to maybe like once a day. But something he says kind of triggered me a little bit because he basically said, you know, when in reference to sex, he just wanted to get to the end of it, okay? Get to the climax of it and kind of keep it pushing. So to me, I just feel like, you know, for it sounds like it's just a sort of wham, bam, okay, I got my spam, and boom, I'm, I'm satisfied. Now, I, it don't say nothing about whether or not, they don't say nothing about whether or not, she, you know, he pleasing her in any kind of way, which I'm sure he is. But ultimately... What I think that he is disconnected from is the experience that 
ultimately leads to the sexual climax. And I'm just kind of like, bro, like if you're not fulfilling her in that way and you're basically telling her that, yo, like I'm, we just trying to get to the end of this thing, right? I'm just trying to get to the climax of all of it. It's like, that don't really sound like nothing that's going to entice somebody to, you know, give you what you want other than maybe a concubine. And it sounds like that's what you want. Like you expect her to just be laid out on the bed, legs spread wide open for you whenever you want without you even enticing her into a state and warming her mind and her body up to a place where she that's what she wants to do. Some people need to be enticed. Some people need to be wowed and wooed and you know buttered up and you know you gotta you can't just put the meat on up on the platter and say eat it up no you gotta like warm the meat up you gotta saute it a little bit and it just kind of triggered me because it made me feel like i don't know like he was just holding this thing over her head like well you know what i'll do what you want me to do but you you're gonna have to give me um some sexual favors and to me that just sounds very like i want you to be my concubine and that's what i'm looking for and you're not going to give it to me and then he starts pout pouting and she basically and, and the reason I, I felt this way was because kimmy felt upset you could see that she was visibly upset if she wasn't taking it seriously in the scene i would have just been like okay you know she not taking him seriously so obviously this ain't a thing but she was you could tell that something was going on in that scene that triggered her too. And I think that's what I didn't like about this conversation at all. But y'all let me know what y'all think about it because maybe it could just be me. Um, but I was not expecting this level of, I don't know, it just felt real misogynistic. And I was just kind of like, bro, like I was not expecting this from you. I would have expected it from Marceau, but Marceau seems to be, be the more reasonable brother when it comes to this situation. Anyway, speaking of frustrating... Tiffany and Lewis are packing and, you know, she talks about she got to leave this retreat early because she got to go speak at an event and he wants to leave with her. Um, you know, he really wants Dr. Francis to help them through their sexual issues, which we have talked about at least once or three times every episode. And I'm tired of hearing about it. OK, for real, because she claimed that they doing it. They claim that they open. She claimed that they not. Now, I just don't understand what you want me to believe. So I don't believe nothing no more. How about that? OK, so anyway, they both got all these issues about, you know, whether or not, you know, he wants too much sex and she thinking that he's addicted to it and whatnot. And then, you know, she starts talking about how she wants Dr. Francis to make uh, make him realize that a, a baby girl is what they need. And I'm like, girl, and for me. I'm looking at her like, well, in order for you to get the baby girl, you're gonna probably going to have to, you know, do a little something strange or, well, you know, get on, you know, uh, do a little something that he wants you to do. OK. And he was basically saying the same thing. Well, in order for us to get to the point of having a baby, I'm going to have to do something to you. OK. And you're going to have to do something with me. OK. How about that? Anyway, I always think that their conversations are so awkward and I don't know what it is about it, but it just I don't know. It never resonates with me for some reason. Anyway, Letitia is packing for the trip. She kind of, she basically has to pull some wifely strings, okay, to make this whole thing work for Marceau. And she basically admits to telling him some little white lies in order to get him to be, you know, excited about this trip, which he would really just be cool going with Kimmy and, and Maurice. Not so much with Louis and Tiffany because he kind of feels like they're very judgmental, although he said there was progress with Lewis over the weekend when he was, you know, um, when they went to the boys trip to Atlanta or whatnot. And, you know, then he suggests, oh, well, maybe we should bring Martel to spice things up a bit. And Letitia is like, uh, no, he is not coming. OK, I don't trust nor like him. Meanwhile, down to the amphitheater, Mama Van is Wearing a I got coins to make not friends to fake t-shirt. So we got the merch popping on the show, baby. Mel is getting her glam and, you know, everybody is hopeful that this leads to more opportunities. And so we see Martel is bringing the kids to the event as Mel works. OK, so he really wanted the kids to see her and he knows it's important to her. So he wants to take the steps to mend their relationship to co-parent better. And, you know, she gets on a break and. Her mom goes back to the back with her and then Martel brings the kids back and she's very happy to see the kids. But, 
you know, she ain't seen him in a while, so she don't know how it's going to go. And it's just the two of them because Mama Van says, you know, kids, y'all want something to drink? Let's leave these two adults alone so they can commiserate for the first time in about eight months or so. I don't, actually don't know how long it's been, but, you know, that was how, that was Mama's plan. So anyway, it seems very pleasant. She thanks him for bringing the kids. He congratulates her on making history and they high five and, you know, he giving her the googly eyes and the 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 the, the, uh, the face and, you know, the Zoolander and everything. And she got the smile going on her face looking like I know these cameras watching and whatnot. And I see this man. I know he looking at me looking like he wants some of this. Yeah, he know what he missing. That's exactly how I felt like she was feeling. And then we get this nice little flashback of their marriage and they gazing at each other at the end of the scene and that's how we end the episode wondering whether or not these two people still got some kind of love for each other because that's what the camera is showing us okay now in true in true to real life i think melody has made statements about the two of them you know not really being together or nothing like that but what we do know is based on social media we had been seeing them on the vacation together so um, it's looking good for these two. And then with this whole, you know, trailer for the next part of the season, I'm like, yo, this is going to be lit. But as you guys know, we will be talking about that in a whole different video. So listen, that is our review for Love and Marriage Huntsville season four, episode 15. And it was just honestly titled Love and Marriage Huntsville. So appropriate way to end the mid season all right let me know what you guys thought about this episode down in the chatterization down below and i will catch you guys in the next video